so we're setting uh, this creek out came back to uh, get the trailer um, got a new tire for it yesterday while we're doing that we're gonna do some more boxes it's like almost 20 below and we have no snow so we're taking the opportunity to uh, do a couple of uh, sets that we can access with the vehicle. There's not enough snow to be snowmobiling. We followed this game trail down here to put this box. And sure enough, we got a bear down right here. So there's almost certainly a bear in there. I'm hoping he's sleeping quite soundly because we put lure not only here. That box is like 10 feet from its den. So it's not the best idea to do that, except it's 20 below, so that bear's gonna be in there for a little bit. But uh, all sorts of game here. I'll show you the main trail. Yeah, we got moose tracks, elk tracks, and deer and coyote all coming right here. Alright, we're just doing some resets on the home quarter. And this is coyote number 8 within about 600 yards of our house. It's pretty crazy, but yeah, beautiful big coyote. So that's awesome. What do you think, Sai? Cool, cool. Cool, cool. It's been by far our uh, best set in this area. We caught several Martin and several weasels in it and it just keeps producing. Alright. This is the one we had set a couple weeks ago now, hey Si? Nice good looking coyote. Beauty. Alright, so Ben and Silas have brought some coyotes in for us to take a look at. So they're well handled coyotes there. Uh, nice and prime. You can look at the leather. The leather is good. Uh, whenever you handle your own animals, make sure you get all the fat, especially off the base of the tail. That's probably the toughest part. Uh, the legs are kept nice and short. You don't need to have that. And the front legs are tucked inside. And then here, the bottom lip's taken off and the lips themselves are taken off. And that's good just because it keeps it from rotting, holding extra moisture. And the ears are always nice to have the cartilage removed. And then just pin forward. Just uh, keep your eyelids uh, nice and small. Uh, nothing really spoils there. And uh, then what we look for is just primeness of fur. How thick it is. How thick the under fur is. And how long the guard hairs are. This batch of coyotes are a lot better than the earlier ones. These ones are, are fuller and primer. Um, these ones here have shoulder mites. Anything like this, uh, that open, it's not worth skinning. Uh, keep it for yourself if you want to try tanning. Uh, but for the fur market, that's in the money part of the coyote and it's not really, not re really valuable. Then you flip it over and you can see the belly. It's got the red staining. Some's not bad. But something like this, where the hair is actually missing, is not uh, not desirable. And so the uh, skin shack is operational. So that's awesome. We got heat. Got that on Kijiji for 50 bucks. We got lights. Been working at this for a while. We got ladders going up into the loft. And Silas has got his, all his fur handling in here. He's going to start moving his strapping stuff in here. It's been, uh, what did you skin today? Um, the weasel. And skinning this thing. And I flushed a squirrel. And a few weasels. All right, and so, a Martin. And a Martin. Yeah, I did some bunch of stuff yesterday evening after supper and a bunch more tonight had one weasel that someone gave us but unfortunately it was uh, 
green belly and the hide slipped and the um, it was dried out by the head and the tail so that'll happen if you leave it frozen too long uh, it'll get freezer burnt we got a steal of, of a deal on this condor's uh, sled. This is the lid for our trapper sled. I'll show you that later. But the lid was all warped from being left out in the sun. So we're uh, reforming it uh, with those spacer slats. So the lid should fit on at least now. It's a flashing beam that we're going to mount right here. Finishing this piece by piece. So that was just skewing out the ears. You can see when you get to here you can see the ears first well before the eyes you can kind of pinch them and separate them off the skull i'm just going to show you how you tell the difference between a juvenile a martin and a mature male in this case on our new trap line we've caught all males because the very uh, healthy population and uh, where there it hasn't been trapped for a while, the mature males tend to displace the juveniles. Not as many juveniles make it, and uh, yeah, so we've caught all adult males there. And once you start catching too many females, that's a good sign to uh, stop trapping that area because that's not what you want to do for long-term sustainability. So this, I can tell it's a adult male, but where this, I think it's bacula meat comes together, it comes together kind of mid skull, right here. Yeah, and if it's a juvenile, it doesn't come together at all, is that right? Yeah, if, if it's a juvenile uh, male, it'll come together at the very, very back of the skull here. Okay, but not in the middle. Yeah, and if it's an adult female, it'll come together at the very back of the skull like a uh, juvenile male. And if it's an adult, I mean a juvenile female, it won't come together at all. There'll be a big gap in the skull kind of here. Yeah, so it's important when you're from a conservation angle to be able to age your Martin and get a handle on what you're catching. A lot of the juveniles don't make it their first winter anyways, so it's good to catch a bunch of juvenile males because that doesn't really hurt your population. Uh, but if you catch a bunch of mature males, that will save a lot of the next year's crop of juveniles, uh, male and female. We're skinning these for taxidermy and quality skin. Silas tans them all himself, so we want to make sure we get the full eyelids. Use these arteries by the eyes if you don't like kind of 